proving this theorem, we will use a lemma. And the lemma is not saying anything about unit square. Okay. So, so the lemma is saying if we divide a polygon or maybe polygonal region because the inside part into triangles, then there is uh, we need one more condition and if the number okay I need to add one more thing here because why why I have to add because we have colored only the rational vertices so if you divide a polygonal region into triangles, those vertices, this condition is always there. And, uh, and what is the other condition? So now, because the vertices are rational coordinates, they will all get some color either red, blue, or green. So if I have a triangle, and if two vertices, adjacent vertices are, uh, well, any two vertices are adjacent, so I will call and uh, I write it down, and the number of red, blue edges on the boundary is all, then the number of rainbow triangles is also odd. Okay, this is the lemma which will be useful for us. And uh, it is called Sperner's Lemma. So uh, it's quite an interesting result because what it is seeing is whatever is happening on the boundary is enough to conclude something about something which is inside the polygon. Okay, so it's quite a interesting result. So let us see a proof of this. Using this lemma, we will prove the theorem. Okay, so, so what we will do is, uh, I have a triangle delta, uh, we will let n delta be the number of red blue edges of this triangle. Okay, so a triangle can be any three combinations, right? It can be either red, blue, blue, or red, blue, green, this is a rainbow triangle, green, red, blue, uh, red, green, red, blue will also be rainbow, right? And lots of some other possibilities. So for example, here, there are no red, blue edges, zero edges. Here, there are two of them, okay? Here, there is only one of them, okay? And of course, you can have other cases. So we will call this number n delta. And n delta can either, it can be 0, 1, or 2. Okay. Like we have seen here. OK. So 
we will let s be the sum of all the end data okay. so uh, i am adding because i have got a finite number of triangles so when we say divide it means finite okay so we are all human beings we cannot keep dividing okay so all divisions are finite so we take the sum of all these triangles now we will count this let us see so if i have this part is pay attention here so it would be nice to have a picture let me see if i can copy some picture here let's try to copy this one not very useful but okay so so assume so we can take any polygonal region let's assume it's a square only and i have divided into triangles okay so now what we are doing is we we'll, let's just we don't know what are the colors well for the bound square we know you know origin should have blue this will be red red and green we have seen this earlier when we were looking at the colors okay this part so origin is uh, okay see origin has first maximum at 1 right so this will be this will be blue this is at x so red so that y this is green and one one is again red okay so this is the colors for the unit square so let's fix those colors other vertices we don't know what i mean you can calculate it because here okay so let's say this is red this is uh, blue i'm just putting at random this is blue this green i suppose so now i'm taking the sum of all the red blue edges so if a red blue edge okay here we don't have anything in the interior um, let me make it more interesting right otherwise it's because we don't need equal area right we are not seeing anything about equal areas so let me put some more triangles in between this red so okay so now if i have a red blue edge uh this has sense to be a triangle and even here right eh? this has sense to be okay so so if i have a red blue edge like this mm. let's take such an edge it will be counted for this triangle also and for this triangle also right both of them will give me this when i do the sum of all the n delta so n delta for this triangle and for okay let's call this delta 1 and this delta 2 both of them will give me the edge and whereas if it is on the boundary red blue edge then i'll just count it once because only one triangle has that edge okay so what we are seeing is this is number of red blue edges on the boundary plus two times the number of red blue edges in the interior
Is this point clear? Now, this is also equal to, let me write it on a new page. Or maybe here only. Also. So now, notice, do we have any rainbow triangle here? R, G, B. Yeah, okay. So this is one rainbow triangle. We are lucky. So, so if I have a blue green edge here, sorry, red blue edge, this is a red blue edge. So for a rainbow triangle, the n delta, n delta will be one, right? It's one for a rainbow triangle. Okay, so, and for any other triangle, so for example, this, uh, well, there are two of them here, rainbow triangles. But for any other triangle, like this delta one, so delta three is a rainbow triangle. Delta one will, so it will either have two, right? It will either, so in this case, there are two red blue edges, or if I look at delta two, delta two also has two of them, red, blue. Let's take something else, mm, RGB. This is a rainbow triangle. Uh, let's take this to be delta two. Okay, so here there are no red blue edges. So what will happen? So the rainbow triangles, sorry. This is the number of Okay, plus, so for all the other triangles, you see that n delta, okay, if you look over here, n delta will either be two, okay, maybe let's, I think it shouldn't be too long. Let's make a list. So you can either have GRR, you can have GBB, again here it is zero, then you can have RGG, again it is zero. B, R, R, B, G. This is again two and B, G, G is zero. Okay. So um, I don't think any other triangles are there, right? So what you see that only let me one, two, three, four, five, six, and yeah, that's all. Yeah. And of course, you can have all red, all green, all blue. Okay. R, R, R. So these are all zeros. So for all the other, so only for a rainbow triangle, it is one. For all the other triangles, it is divisible by two. Okay. So plus two times. Mm, So in actually we can make it precise, number of BRR and RBB triangles. Okay, for all the others, you will get zero. Is this clear? So now what is Perna's lemma saying? Number of rainbow edges, oh, sorry, RB edges on the boundary is odd. Okay, so if number of ring RB edges on boundary is odd, then this S has to be odd because it's even plus odd. Okay, but here, if this part is already even, so this has to be odd. Okay. So,
then then okay so that's all that's the proof of sperner's lemma and because it is odd that means it has to be at least one okay so you have any such polygonal region you just go on the boundary you count the number of red blue edges okay if it is odd then you can say that you don't know how many rainbow triangles are there but at least one has to be there because it is odd okay so that is so it just tells you it is odd but you can see at least one so that is the sperner's lemma okay so now the final thing how will sperner's lemma help us to prove this theorem so in the theorem what we have done we have divided the unit square into triangles and i want to say there is at least one rainbow triangle so all i have to do now is i have to say on the boundary of the unit square there are a odd number of rb edges that's all okay is this clear i just have to say i don't worry about anything else only on the boundary of the unit square i should have a odd number of red blue edges then sperner's lemma is saying there is at least one rainbow triangle okay is it clear okay so let's go ahead so that's the last step now we are done almost and once we prove this so let's take a big square so this is our unit square so we have already seen that this vertex has b r r g okay. i don't know how the division of triangles is there i don't know anything else okay so now let us see what we can say so let me just write down our aim uh, enough to show I'm not writing all the work. So we we are now working for the unit square. Why are there odd number of edges? So let us look at the left edge. Okay, on the left edge, left side, any point will look like some zero comma a. now such a point how will the graph of this look i want to see the coloring right so zero will get zero a i don't know one will get some coloring one so definitely whatever it is the first coordinate cannot be the first maximum okay so zero a cannot be red so on this edge i can only have only blue or green edges on uh, vertices okay so remember i just have to like i just want to see these vertices on the edges so on this edge i can only have blue or green vertices okay what about on the top side on the top side the points look like a comma 
e comma one. How will the graph look? For a, I don't know. So here also for a, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't know for a. For one, it is on top. Last one is also on top. So can you see what color cannot happen? Can you see that? So definitely the last coordinate cannot be the first maximum. So it cannot be blue. Okay. Remember the order was red, green and blue. This cannot be blue. So on this top edge, we only have red and green vertices. Let us look at the uh, right edge. So on the right edge, the points are of the form uh, 1 comma A. So the graph will look like something here, something, something. So this cannot be. Okay, try to see. And for the lower edge, the points are of the form A comma 0. So again, I don't know the first one. 0 is 0, 1 is 1. So coordinate definitely is not a maximum. So, uh, okay, here they are maximum, but all, I mean, they could be maximums. Okay, so this cannot be green. See, don't, don't get misled by my picture. When I put a blank box, it could have been even bigger than one. Okay. So, we are not seeing here that this is a maximum. It could be anywhere on this line. Okay, so uh, just uh, okay, once you get this, so on the right edge, I can only have red green vertices. On the lower edge, I can only have red and blue vertices. Okay, is it clear how many have followed this? At least you feel uh, you're comfortable with this. You don't have to follow all the details. Okay, so we have got this. So now on the left side, how many red blue edges can be there? zero, there cannot be any, there's no red point. Okay, so there is zero on this side. Okay. So on, on the top, again, there is no blue over here on this. So again, I have zero red blue edges. Now these two sides, I can have red blue uh, here, and did we do it correctly? Red right side. Mm, the first maximum, no, you see, it could be. Mm, one A and one. So it could be red, it could be green. It cannot be blue. That is right. Yeah, so this is the right. Okay, so I had some wrong in this. Okay, this is fine. So here also you don't have any blue vertex. So you're only worried about how many red blue edges are here. Okay. So now look at let us just look at that edge. So I draw one line. Let's use this color. 
So I know this side is a blue. Now I could have some blues somewhere. But now the last one is a red. I have a red over here. Maybe there's a red here. There's a red over here. Okay. And perhaps there are two reds here. Okay. We don't know okay, what vertices are here. But what is the thing you can observe is that now we are only interested in the number of red blue edges. So you see that if I have if I have two consecutive reds, I can remove one of them. Okay, let me draw it first, then I'll explain it. Any one of them, it's your choice. Same way, two consecutive blues, I can remove one of them. What do I mean I can remove? Of course, I can do what I want, but what is the point? The point is that they both have the same number of red blue edges. Okay. Do you see that? Here I have one. This is okay, one. Here I have two. Then here I have three. Here I have four. Here I have one, two, red, blue. Uh, I'm getting five. Okay. Oh, here there's a four here. This is a four. This is a five. This is a... Okay. So it's all, uh, I mean, obvious, right? If I have two reds, then like for example, if I want to count from this side, how many red blue edges are there? Okay, so I got one, I got two. Now again, I get a blue. So that will not give me anything. Now from this blue, I again get a red. So I can assume that these two blues, I can cancel this intermediate part. Okay? This was not useful for me. Now I get a red blue edge. Again, this part, is just giving me red. So I can assume this point is same as this. I again continue from here and I get a red blue edge. And again, I can assume these two are equal. Is it clear? So whenever I have consecutive same colored points, I can identify them. I can ignore that part. Is it clear? Okay. okay, so that's it. So now, so that means only such a thing can, I mean, I have to worry about where they are alternate, right? Now they are alternate and the first one is blue, last one has to be red. So you see, I can only get an odd number of red blue edges. So on the lower edge, uh, has to be always okay so that's it so you see that on this unit square boundary you have an odd number of red blue edges so there is a rainbow triangle and having a rainbow triangle it means that uh, the area Okay, so, so this is the theorem we have proved. When we divide the unit square, then there is a rainbow triangle using Sperner's lemma. And once I have a rainbow triangle, what is the advantage? Then this theorem is proved that 
there is a triangle whose area has two norm greater than one because for a rainbow triangle we have seen this okay? the two norm is bigger than one okay? so so okay so we have proved this theorem and this theorem implies monsky's theorem right because when i divide the square into k triangles of equal area then this theorem is saying there is a triangle whose area is two norm and therefore all the triangles their area has two norm greater than one and if this is greater than one then k is less strictly less than one okay so that's uh, Okay, so and then k will be even. So we have proved Monsky's theorem uh, with the star condition. The triangles, their vertices have rational coordinates, and uh, to get for, uh, I mean, if I want to remove this comment, what I need is I need that. this norm this two norm i have defined only on rational numbers but there is a theorem that you can define a function on real numbers which will give the same values as the two norm on rational numbers so you are extending this norm function on the rational numbers to real numbers okay and it will still have these three properties this is the first one multiplicative and then for addition and if it is strictly greater than this so these three properties which is all we have used in the rest of the proof right we didn't use the definition of the two norm we just used these properties so so because these properties are true and i can define it on real numbers instead of only rational numbers uh, that means there is an extension to real numbers uh, so that will imply the monsky's theorem without this condition mm -hmm.